Okay, so here we are back at one of our favourite locations, the Field of Dreams, and we're really hopeful of finding something we good are. today. Um, so we'll be field walking, and field walking is basically just walking up and down a plough field to see what you can find lying on the surface. So it's a beautiful day, unexpectedly. It wasn't supposed to be this beautiful and sunny, yeah. um, but we're very excited to get started. So let's do it. of the day is what looks like a piece of medieval pottery. Look at that green glaze. That is fairly typical medieval that. So yeah, that's fantastic. Little marble looking thing here. Oh yeah, look! Tiny little glazed marble. Like a peewee marble, I think. Actually, I'm not sure whether it's glass or clay, but I like that little find. Got a few old pottery sheds here. I think this is a piece of German stoneware, like maybe of some kind of beaker or jug. And then this little something here. It's green glazed. But it looks like it's slip coated underneath, which I think that means it's not medieval, it's a bit later. So maybe like post medieval pottery? But again, pottery is difficult to date, it's very it's a very expert subject, so but I think that's what those two things are, which is really cool because that means they're hundreds and hundreds of years old. Could this be a bead? Can you see it? Could it be a bead? Oh my goodness, yes it is. Oh, it's a bit dinged up. But it's a bead. It's definitely a bead. Fantastic. Alex heard the word bead and she's heading yeah, over. What's going on here? <laughs> we oh. found a bead. Oh it's, yeah. It's a bit... Uh, it's very cracked. Worse for wear, but it is a bead. Yeah, a bead to bead. So look at this. Just sitting here, minding its own business, is a pipe bowl. Unfortunately, it's broken, but that's a pretty old one, I think. Yep, that's quite an old pipe bowl. It's a very promising little something something down here. Can anyone guess what I think that might be? Let's see if it's whole. Oh my goodness, it is whole. That's tiny. It's a leg. It's a leg, it's a leg. It always is a leg. I'm not complaining because I love finding little legs. Hey, Alex has just found something. Let's go and see what it is. <laughs> oh, Another it's leg. not, is it? It is, and it's <laughs> tiny. What are you with legs? I legs don't know. McGee. I don't know. <laughs> I attract legs apparently. That's <laughs> tiny. I love them though, I'm not complaining. They're brilliant. And someone isn't shooting at us. We think that's no. a bird scarer <laughs> in the next field, so yeah. <laughs> we hope it's not someone shooting at us anyway. Yeah. This is strange because it looks like another leg. It is! The top's missing off it, but it is a leg. It's a little foot. Can you see that? Little foot. Little porcelain foot. This is just getting weird now. Last time I found four. I found two already. This time. Do you think the field is trying to tell me something about legs? <laughs> What's it trying to tell me? <laughs> Do I need to make jewellery with these little legs or something? What is it trying to tell me? Strange coincidence. Oh, this is something different. Look. 
That's a wig colour. It's the end of a wig colour. Well, half a wig colour. See if it has anything on the bottom. Oh! Might have something on the bottom. That would be really cool. But yeah, that's a pretty chunky one. I'd absolutely love to find a whole wig curler. That's on my bucket list. Oh, what a shame. It kind of looks pretty fresh, the snap as well. Wow, would you look at that. Mum's found a brilliant head. Yeah, it's really detailed. It is, it's but very it's detailed. It's, it's lovely. really, it's lovely. Loads of detail in that. Well done. That's brilliant. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that's a bit of resistance. Oh, it's got a tiny bit of stem. And <laughs> guess what? It's the heart, and we all know who that belongs to. And yeah, it's a tenant's workman pipe. The TW stands for tenant's workman or the workman. And the trademark signs was the heart. Fantastic. Now here is a very chunky piece of pipe stem and this usually signifies um, an older pipe. Um, because they were longer they had to be a bit thicker sometimes to take the weight. So let's see. too much. I don't want to rub it off. I might be able to identify that and that does signify that this is probably late 17th or early 18th century. That's 1600s, late 1600s to early 1800s. So that is very interesting. Fantastic. This is not man-made at all. Because it's a little piece of agate. Look at that. I think it's got like banding in it as well. I'm not sure, can't see it very well. Yeah, what a great little spot I've got here. I'd love to find a whole wig curler, that would just be absolutely incredible. But it's more it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely in this field because of the plough. Strange little disc. Feels like metal. That's weird. Oh, and there's another bit. It's like a cup handle. More what looks like gem, gem and stoneware of some kind. Cool. Look down here. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that, more banded agate. Looks like it's just been chopped by the plough. A beauty, that is really beautiful. Look at that glass as well. It's a really vibrant piece of glass. Cool. Oh, this looks like a really pretty little like a penny perfume bottle oh i'd love that to be whole let's please be whole oh my goodness it is oh that is gorgeous look at her she's really chipped up around the lip though unfortunately she's been nibbled away at the lip but like 90 percent complete Wow, that's gorgeous. I absolutely love that. I love little bottles and that's just really beautiful. It's certainly Victorian, like 1800s. Wow, that's really cool. 
got a fragment of a little fairy pipe here. It's quite knackered though, unfortunately. And I can't see a maker's stamp on the bottom because it's gone. Let's hope we find a whole one today anyway. There's an entire piece of change lying here. I know mum likes chains, but I don't really feel like lugging that around the field, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, walking along and then from a distance, I spot it. Can you see what I'm looking at? Down here. There she is. <laughs> I can spot a doll's head at 50 yards. Quite a nice little face, she's got little red lips. A little doll's cup here that I think is probably broken. Oh, it's a little jug. And it's mostly not broken actually. It's missing its handle and a bit of the lip. I might take that to give to Sarah from Manchester Mudlarks. Don't think it has anything on it or anything. I don't know. I might, I might take it anyway. Take the lead off the field. Always got to be sure to pick up plastic too. Is that plastic? It is. I'll take that with me. Oh, hopefully I can make some jewellery with this. But if it is what I think it is. It's a massive lug. And here. Yeah, might be enough around the edge to put a bezel around it. And if you can hear me, it's so windy. Yeah, make that into a really quirky little pendant or something. I just found this. I thought it was a whole doll's head. And I got excited for a second, but then I realized it split right down the middle of the head. It's only half a doll's head. Literally. Oh well. Another victim of the plough. So mum just showed me her pipe that she found that has a little diamond on it. And look, a few seconds later, I literally find one myself. Could be from the same pipe maker. How crazy is that? It's incredible. It's not focusing. You never guess how tiny this bead is that mum's just found down here. Look I don't at even know how I saw this. What on earth? Where is it? I don't even know where it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> how did I see that? It's so small I can barely pick it up. That's crazy. Look. How did you see that all the way from standing up? <laughs> that know. is tiny. What on earth? We're just bead magnets. It's a bead, <laughs> it's a tiny bead. <laughs> is that another bit of lead? Yeah. Oh, it is. is it? It's another bit of lead. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, what's that? I just like a button. Yeah, it's weird. It's like dome shaped on the top. Anyway, I was just about to film this little rolled up bit of lead here. Look, it's just small and it's like really tightly coiled up. Now that's interesting because um, I just saw somewhere the other day, I can't remember if it was on television or I read it, that the Romans actually rolled up bits of lead with a curse or a wish on them and threw them somewhere, I can't remember now. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's put a curse on someone. Yeah, so imagine if it had some kind of Roman Latin writing on the inside or something. I'm going to look that up yeah. again and see what I can find yeah, out. Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about that um, later on. Yeah. Could this innocent looking roll of lead really hold an ancient Roman curse? All levels of society in Roman times believed in the power of magic. The writing of curses on lead tablets was common practice throughout the Greco-Roman world and they were usually found folded or rolled and sometimes pierced with a nail. Most of the tablets are difficult or even impossible to translate. 
One theory is that the entrepreneurs who produced the tablets invented secret languages that only they and the gods could understand. Tablets have been found with the spaces for names to be added later, which suggests they have been written in advance to be filled in according to the customer's wishes. Curse tablets have not only been found throughout the Mediterranean, but also in Britain, which was under Roman occupation for over 400 years. The curses were written for all manner of reasons. Curses against enemies and rivals, spells to bring love or wealth, or drive evil spirits away. In the town of Bath in England, 130 of them were found when a Roman bath there was excavated. They were written to the Roman goddess Sulis Minerva asking for revenge for the petty theft of personal items from the baths. Many rolls of lead similar to ours have been found around the UK by metal detectorists. Some have been identified as cursed tablets and others described as of unknown use. We will be handing ours over to our local finds liaison officer for possible identification and we'll let you know the outcome in a future video. So look at that. And didn't you just say before to ask everyone, everyone to, to think, think, coin. think coin? Well down here, look, <laughs> look, coin. I literally spot it out the corner of my eye. I'm sitting there, I think that's what metal detectorists call a sunbather because it's just yeah. sitting on the surface. But look at that. How crazy is that? Mm, what is it? What it is it? Like hate me. Yeah, it doesn't look very old. It's probably Victorian or Georgian or something. Oh, oh no, it's wait, a button. It's not a coin. It's, it's a dandy's button. It's a Georgian button. How cool's that? Georgian button. Georgian button. There you go. And a rolled up bit of lead that might have a Roman curse on it. Or something. Or a wish. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it's not a coin, as we first thought, but it is definitely something just as cool. This big button is probably from the coat of a Georgian dandy. When new, this sort of button would have been bright and shiny. Some were plated in silver or even gold. Fashionable young men of the time would have worn them on their coats, and the bigger and shinier, the better. It's a Georgian button that's probably 200 or more years old. So that's pretty good. Okay, so we've got two in one finds down here. Really exciting. Don't know if you can spot them, but first of all, down here we've got a mod cobble, a cod marble. Oh Can't my cod! <laughs> <laughs> and just down here, look at that. Oh, and it's whole. That's fantastic. It's whole, what's that, like 17th century? Yeah. Something like that. Late 17th century, probably. Crazy. Has it got a mark on the bottom? I don't think it does, although I can't see very well. But it's still a gorgeous find, isn't it? That's fantastic. Before we get out of footsteps again. Oh, would you look at that? Another little doll's jug. This one has something on it. Oh, look at that. It has like a little bow on it and a rose. It's almost whole apart from the handle. That's the only thing that's missing. Oh, that's such a cute little doll's tea set jug. So cute. So it looks like I found a doll's cup down here. It looks whole. Oh, oh yes. Geez. Oh my goodness, it is! Oh, that's I've so sweet! Never found a whole, like, little bit of dolls. It's like a mug. Dolls crockery <laughs> on the field, have we? This is like the first what, whole one we've ever I found. I think so. It's hard to remember now. That's so How crazy cool. is that? I love that. It's so cute. <laughs> Teepsy.
a doll. giant one. Oh, no. Look, that's a ribbon on there. It's a giant piece of doll's leg. Oh no, I want the foot. <sighs> that will be the biggest doll's leg of this type that I've ever seen. Oh, what a shame the foot's missing. And another piece of pipe stem with a bit of a diamond pattern on it. How amazing. I love them. Because I might be able to look them up and identify the pipe maker. Probably a Newcastle or Gateshead one. We always find an interesting assortment of pipe stems and bowls on the field of dreams and this time was no exception. Most of the ones we picked up dated from the 17th to early 18th centuries. One in particular was distinguishable as that of Leonard Holmes. It bears a diamond shaped stamp with the initials L to the left and H to the right, with a fleur-de-lis above and below. Leonard was one of the Holmes family of pipe makers of Gateshead and operated from 1671 until his death in 1707. The following is an extract from his will. I, Leonard Holmes of Gateshead in the county of Durham, pipe maker, give and devise to my son Leonard Holmes all my clay and work tools belonging to my trade of whatever kind soever and included in an inventory of the 4th of April 1707 is a small parcel of pipes valued at six shillings and eightpence, which in today's money is equivalent to about 37 pounds. The whole of his pipe making inventory was valued at 13 pounds and eightpence, which is about 1,400 pounds today. There's part of a massive horseshoe here. Wow, look at that. That's half of it, that's the toe, that would have had a big hoof, it's a big um, shire type horse, Clydesdale or something like that, he used to plough the fields. This looks like a big clay marble, and it is. Cool. I think this is just a fastener of something, like half of a fastener. Not sure though. Could be a buckle. Could be. Yeah, it could be a lot older than I think. Hmm. What is this? <laughs> it's a poor little person. They look like they're in their nightshirt. <sighs> oh dear, with no head, legs or arms. It's a lid, I think. Ouch. No, yes, some sort of lid. I think nothing on it, but it's completely whole. So that's always good because, you know, it's hard to survive when you're a piece of china in the field of dreams. Oh my goodness. I found these before made of bone, but this one's made of china. Oh, fancy finding one of these. It might be some sort of bobbin. 
but I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I love it. Oh, Mum says she's found another mystery object. What is this? I have no idea. Oh my goodness, it's like it's like one of those things yeah. we found on the river. Yeah, we found them in bones. Yeah, like it's just like the bone. But this is China. What on earth are they? What is it? Please leave in the comments below if you think you know what this is because we would love to and we can't find anything. But how weird, that's and cool at the same time, like me. <laughs> a while ago, we found a mystery object made of bone that we were having trouble identifying. Strangely, we then found a similar artifact in the field of dreams, but this time it was made of glazed porcelain. So what on earth could they be? Our first conclusion is that they must have been something fairly common for us to have found two complete ones and several fragments at opposite sides of the country. A further examination of the shape led me to believe that something soft like leather or rubber had been attached to the end. Could a rubber teat have fitted over the end with a bone disc? Was it the handle part of a baby's dummy or pacifier? After much research, I found this illustration of a late 19th century patent for nipple holders, and this just about had me convinced. Both the bone and the ceramic handles had slits in them, and Alex pointed out that this could have been to allow the air to escape from the teat when sucked or chewed. With all this information, there was now only one way to find out if our research was correct. We purchased a modern dummy and took it apart to get the teat. I took the teat from the modern dummy and one of the bone discs that we had found previously and attempted to thread the teat through the disc. After a bit of coaxing, I managed to get it in place. I then took the ceramic handle and gently pushed it through into the teat until it clicked into place past the bone disc. And there we have it, a complete Victorian baby's dummy. Another mudlarking mystery solved. This random brass thing. It just made me realise that this field would be absolutely epic to do some proper metal detecting on. I mean, if you can find coins and buttons, oh my goodness! There is a coin! What? That is weird. That is strange. I don't know, that might just be a modern... Is it modern? Might be a modern penny or something? I'll have to have a look at that and get back to you, but... Okay, that is so weird. As the second I mention something on the Field of Dreams, it's like this, this keeps happening to me. The second I mention something, it just like appears. Like last time I was like, I never find arms and then an arm just appeared. And this time I was talking about finding coins and there was just a coin on the surface. Um, but I thought it was a modern one penny, um, but I can see really clearly on here It says 1860 How cool is that? An 1860 so that's Queen Victoria on there Crazy these things keep happening Maybe we should say we want a gold coin next a nice big gold coin. What have you found? I found this coin and I thought it was just like a modern one penny. Yeah. And it's not, it's a Queen Victoria 1860. I think, what, what is it? I'm not sure what kind of coin is that. But how crazy. Can't see it. Um. I think I've got another unusual little bit of lead down here. Yeah. Don't know what it is, but it's got something on it. How weird, I'm finding so much metal. I am the metal detector. <laughs> and behold, here is actually a part of a plough. <sighs> this is what uncovers all our treasures for us every year. Uh, and breaks them at the same time, so the plough is bittersweet. I just found a beautiful piece of slag glass, or end of day glass, would be the base of something I think. 
some kind of pressed glass dish or vase or something. It's probably made locally, so that's cool. No, that's really cool. We can make beads with that. Swirly blue and white beads, which, yeah, let's hope that works because that'll be really cool. Just spotted this cheeky little cod marble. And there we go. It's whole. Always a joy to find, especially in this low winter sun. Look at that, magical. I think I found another really old piece of pottery here. Some kind of jug handle. Look at that. That's just like a piece I found the last time we were here. Wow. It's got some green glaze on there. I've got a feeling that is quite old. I'd love to know exactly what it was and exactly how old it was though. We believe these are the fragments of handles from locally produced medieval or post-medieval earthenware vessels with remnants of a copper green glaze. this wonderful ear, this really big ear. This would have been off a porcelain doll's head, but that would make great jewellery. <laughs> an earring or an ear pendant. Just found a little something here that looks quite interesting. It's like a coin. Oh no, it's a morning button. It's a, it's a jet cut glass button, French jet rather. Looks like it's got like copper alloy in the back. Maybe it was a cabochon in a button. Oh, that's a nice little find. It's an absolutely gorgeous little Chalcedony nodule. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Ooh, what's that say? Oh, I can't read it. <sighs> I'm struggling to read that right now. Gonna have to look at it with the camera turned off. Okay, so I think it says Corden Dilworth. Which I have never seen before. That is the only one of those stoppers I've ever seen. So that's really interesting. We'll have to look up what kind of bottle that stopper was in. This bottle is from a Gordon and Dilworth catsup or ketchup bottle. The company began in 1847 in Astoria, New York, when Reed Gordon Sr. started a pickling and preserving business. He continued there till 1850 when he moved the business to 575 Greenwich Street, New York City. In about 1853, 
he took his brother into the business and it became known as R. Gordon and Co. When Gordon's brother left the company in 1861, Gordon went into partnership with William H. Dilworth. When Gordon retired in 1869, his son, also known as Reed Gordon, took his place and in 1892 the company of Gordon and Dilworth was formed. From the beginning, tomato catsup had been one of the principal products of the business. Large exports were made to England and in 1892 the English company of Gordon and Dilworth was formed in London. wonder what was in this pot. It says legs and so what was it for? My best guess is like some kind of rheumatism, something for your aches and pains. Wow, well, I just found a part of another pot. I dropped the other bit, so I don't know if it matches up. But look, it has a lady on it. There's like snakes coiled around the like chair or throne she's sitting on. Wow. I'd love to know what that was. This little fragment of pottery is from a Holloway's ointment pot. Thomas Holloway was born in Devon in 1800. His father was a baker and later ran the Turk's Head Inn in Penzance in Cornwall. After living in France for a few years, Holloway moved to London where he worked as an interpreter for an import-export company and later set himself up as a foreign and commercial agent. It was about this time that he met Italian Felix Albinolo who manufactured and sold a general purpose ointment. Having had no medical background at all, but seeing the commercial potential, Holloway set up his own business, producing and selling a similar ointment. Once again, we see a man who is willing to deceive and endanger ordinary people for his own gain. His newspaper advertisements made outlandish claims in the form of false endorsements from doctors and medical practitioners, validating his products and the claims of the things his ointments and pills could cure. These included ulcers, venereal ulcers, wounds, bad legs, nervous pain, grout, rheumatism, contracted and stiff joints, pains of the chest and bones, difficult respiration, swellings and tumours, stony and ulcerated cancers, scrofula or king's evil, all skin diseases, ringworm, scald head, Burns, soft corns, bunions and chillblains. Despite being called out as a quack at the time, by the 1860s Holloway was a rich man. He later built two large institutions, Holloway Sanatorium and Royal Holloway College in Surrey as gifts to the nation. Was this a way of easing his conscience in later life? Thomas Holloway died at his Georgian mansion, Tittenhurst Park, of congestion of the lungs in 1883. Oh, not another one. It's a leg. <sighs> I think the top's missing. What on earth? Can't have too many legs, apparently. Oh, what's that? Bit of lead. A lead wiggle. Seems to be loads of bits of lead. And here's another lid looking thing. And yes, it's the same as the other one. Oh, this one's got writing on it. Boots Cash Chemist. Oh, wow. Look at that. That gives us a clue as to what was in, what these were for. <laughs> How wonderful! It's whole and it's got writing on it. The first lid I found gave me no clue as to its original purpose, and then I found another which was almost identical, except it was printed with Boots Cash Chemist. The first mention of Boots as a business is in 1851 with John Boot, who was a medical botanist at 71 Woolpack Lane in the city of Nottingham, England. 
John died in 1860 at the age of 44, leaving the business to his wife Mary. Mary ran the business in her name and later in partnership with her son Jesse, who took over the business when his mother retired in 1877. Jesse went on to build on the foundations his mother had laid and by 1896 he owned 60 shops in 28 towns around Britain. Nowadays, Boots has all but been swallowed up by Unichem and Walgreens, but is still a common sight on our high streets. Wow, look at that! A whole pot lid! I know! That is a whole pot lid right there! Boots oh, Cash it. Chemist! It I know that we've not found anything like that before actually. That's so cool! Hey! Another mysterious figure, methinks. Oh, this one is a head! Oh, look, that's a hat. It's like a little boy or a little girl saluting or holding their hat. Oh, it might be a little sailor. Oh, that's cute. Well, I'm glad it has a face anyway. <laughs> the best part of a pipe bowl down here be a miracle if it's whole. Oh my goodness. It's a tenant heart pipe. There we go, there's the heart. Wow. How did that survive? I've never found a whole I've never found a whole 1800s pipe bolt in this field before. That's crazy. Wonder how that managed to survive the plough for all these years. It's got a tiny little nick out of it, but I think that's got away with it pretty well. We've got a lovely that's little fairy pipe here, look. It's so nice. Oh, it's almost whole. It's just got a tiny little chip out of it, look. That is beautiful. It's tinsy wincy Oh, it's a shame it does, doesn't look like it has any maker's name on it. But still, love a little fairy pipe. That is beautiful. I'd say 1660s? Yeah, definitely. Something yeah. 17th century. Beautiful. Cool. Okay, so I just heard Alex mumbling behind me that she hasn't found a bead. And the words had not come out of her mouth but a minute. <laughs> then she's found. It's just right down here. She's found a bead. There it is, a little green one. Oh wow, that's lovely. A little green bead. <laughs> I literally just said, didn't I? Yeah, you just said. You were mumbling as the, behind me as we were walking along. That's complaining crazy. that she hadn't found a bead. It's happening. <laughs> I'm like, why haven't I found this? And there they, it just appeared. Well, you're magic then, it obviously. Magic. It's the it's only it's explanation. Feel the dream is magic. <laughs> it's the only explanation. I think that is a little bird. It's been perched on some kind of like handle of something. Yeah, I thought it looked like a little birdie. That's cute. I think we've we found a whole figurine here. It's a little sailor. It's a sailor with no hair. Oh no. Oh. All but the head. Oh the poor lad. Oh. Maybe we'll take him anyway, someone would make some use out of him. Yeah, we might have a head that fits. <laughs> Who knows? Just in case this is something. Oh no, not again. It is something. It's a frozen Charlotte. But um, only a part of a frozen Charlotte. She's got no legs or no head. They never do. Darn it. Okay, this really has to be the last find of the day. <laughs> a cod marble. Because it's dark again. Oh, but not yet because there is yet another cod marble. <sighs> Will there be another cod marble before I get back to the car? We 
love field walking. The amazing range of finds and history makes every adventure so exciting. So, which find do you think deserves its place in the Window of Wonders this week? Last week we had a clear winner with the tiny porcelain dove wedding cake decoration. We are also running a giveaway on our Instagram account for one of our silver tenant heart pipe necklaces. See your Instagram on how to enter. Link in the description below. So we've had a wonderful day on the Field of Dreams. Well, it is getting dark now, so we can't really carry on in the darkness, no. unfortunately. If it wasn't going to get dark, we probably would be here all night yeah. at yeah. this rate. Well, but in the summer, it's a good job it's not the summer because yeah. it doesn't get dark until sort of 11 o'clock at night. I know, we'd be actually... <laughs> absolutely knackered we'd be dead yeah people would be <laughs> finding us on the field of dreams but anyway it's time to say goodbye for now and thank you thank you to everyone who's liked the video everyone who has commented below and of course to everyone who has subscribed and also to all of our wonderful patrons on patreon who help to keep us going every month people have bought us the um co coffee on kofi or cups of tea on kofi because <laughs> that all helps people have bought us things from our Amazon wish list. All these things help to keep us going yeah. so that you can see our videos. Exactly. So we'll see you again next week. Bye! Bye.